is there <coughs> a certain amount of data that does need to be collected, and is there a way to collect it that yes. is consistent with the Fourth Amendment? Yes, yes. Talk, There's talk two basic principles you have to use. The basic principles that we would have, we, we even made a proposal to the NSA that we would do it for all their collection in 2004. The principle goes like this. One is what I call the two degree principle. If you have a terrorist talking to somebody in the United States, that's the first degree of away from the terrorist. Uh, we, we, and that could apply to any country in the world. Uh, and then the second degree would be who that person in the United States talked to. So that becomes your zone of suspicion. And the other one is you watch all the jihadi sites on the web and uh, who's visiting those jihadi sites, who has an interest in the philosophy being expressed there. And, that, and they, then you add those to your zone of suspicion. Everybody else is innocent. I mean, you know, of terrorism. Until anybody. they're somehow yeah, connected to this Until you can show activity. that right. there's, a, so that then is your realm of collection. So you pull in all the content involving the zone of suspicion and you throw all the rest of it away. But you can keep the attributes of all the communication, communicants in the other part of the world, the rest of the seven billion people, right? And uh, you can in, then encrypt it and so that nobody can interrogate that base randomly. That's a way of preventing this kind of uh, random access by a contractor or by the FBI or any other DHS or any other department of government. They couldn't go in and find anybody. They you couldn't target a next door neighbor because you, if you went in with his attributes, they're encrypted. You won't find them. That's right. Okay. So, so unless they're in the zone of suspicion, you won't see any content on anybody, and you won't see any attributes in the clear. And this is all within our capabilities. It's all within the, our capabilities. And let me tell you, our, it's been within our capabilities for well over 12 exactly. years. Exactly. Right. And let me tell you, we, um, Bill and I worked for a, um, on a government contract, a foreign contractor, not too far from here. And um, <coughs> when we showed him the concept of how this privacy mechanism that Bill just described to you, the two degrees, the encryption and hiding of identities of innocent people, he said, nobody cares about that. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? <clears throat> this man was in a position to know a lot of government people uh, in the contracting and uh, buying of capabilities. He said, nobody cares about that. So this has gone far beyond the original mandate. It's gone far beyond the authorization <clears throat> of military force. It's gone far beyond even the existential <clears throat> threat. Because you now have a system that's able to collect and have access to massive amounts of data on, com on the 99.99%, that's conservative, people that are completely innocent have nothing connected to terrorism <coughs> at all. They just want the data. And so, as I've been saying recently, imagine you take all of your keys that you have to your cars, your house, all your accounts, all your passwords. You go to the other side of town, and you simply hand it over to a complete stranger, say, hey, please take care of this for me. <laughs> are you, you gonna right. do it? Yes, that's right. So, I, are I, you I, gonna do it? No. Why not, but why not? The yeah. real question right. here is why right. not? This is an American. It's a fellow American. You don't know them. You trust them, right? right? Why wouldn't you turn that over to them? I, I, why can not? I, can I add one? No, I, just, I want to just yeah, really. Yeah, why wouldn't right. you? That's why right. wouldn't you? Because you don't know that you can trust them. Because exactly. some things are supposed to be. So private. why yeah. would you then let the government, exactly. which is not even by member, <clears throat> it's also governed by consent, right? right? This, this is manufactured consent, and let them do that in private without your knowledge. You know, that's yeah, what's at stake and, in this country going and, forward. And I wanted to add uh, to that to the principles of getting uh, terrorists or anybody else, drug smugglers or anything else, using the two degree principle in the site visitation thing. The point is, I don't know of a terrorist so far that wouldn't fit into that category. The bombers in Boston, the, right. the shooter in, in Fort Hood. But in the event that you find a, a terrorist that, that doesn't fit into that category and that you didn't pick up, then you would, what you would do is analyze, well, why didn't we pick him up? Okay? And then when you discovered why you didn't pick him up, you would add those rules as, as, as gaining knowledge that would make your system even better. If they'd started that ten, 12 years ago, like we wanted to do, they would have that knowledge now on everything. And, uh, you know, there wouldn't be any exceptions at all. Right.